I think I was very small when I heard Wagner first time. I'm from a very small town and I went to the library and I borrowed Tristan and Isolde and I started to listen to it and I carried away instantly and then I wanted to listen all the Wagner operas and I suppose I have always been a Wagnerian. My career has been very symphonic but now I have been doing more and more Wagner which is of course my dream. Something in the way I do music speaks very well together with Wagner and also of course all the late romantics. Professor Phantom, one could say that this is the first opera by Wagner in which we really hear that it is Wagner. Practically everything he composed after this was developing the ideas he was getting in and from uh, Der Fliegen and the Hollander. The, the leitmotiv technique, um, the continuous drama, which is not interrupted that often by arias, and also this mythological world, which became very important for him later. I would say it's a key work. I mean, it, it's still composed by a fairly young composer, but already very experienced opera composer. And we can hear that he's about to enter an unknown territory. And you understand from this piece that this person is going to define opera again in the future. Wagner himself didn't want to use the word leitmotiv. I think it was something which was invented uh, in 1870s, 1880s when he was still alive, but many people wanted to analyze his pieces and they realized that, aha, there are motives, you know, the, the sword has a motive and sea has a motive and love has a motive. And, and they started to make these lists and Wagner was really unhappy about it. He didn't want his music to be reduced only to motives. I think for him they became a tool with which he could actually compose even longer pieces than he had been doing before. We should listen to the leitmotifs really too much because they are just they are just a musical element which provide the mood. We should really follow the words, the story, and we should follow the way how, how the music is streaming. It was a way to get into the psychology of his characters and we shouldn't simplify it too much. I have actually never never done Le Vesa Phantom before. Of course I knew it well since I was a kid and I have, I've seen many, many performances. I've been studying the score, I have been conducting uh, the aria of Daland, I have been conducting the aria of, of Holland uh, from the first act. I have been conducting the overture, so it's not unknown music. For me it's, it's very important because in the future I am going to conduct Ring, the whole ring, and in a way, I think this is the little brother, brother of the of the big operas he composed later. And I think it's uh, for me, it's a it's a perfect introduction to Wagner's music. And of course, if you are Wagnerian, it's very important that you do all all the Wagner operas. And I'm really happy that I got the chance to do, uh, especially Der Fliegen and Hollander here in Paris. <laughs> It's a great honor to be here, you know, such a historical um, house and at the same time very modern. I've been really impressed by the way how things go professionally. I mean, every part of the chain, they know what they do. Everyone in this company are the highest level professionals uh, in, in their own field. It makes it very easy for someone to, to come here as a, as a guest artist. You feel welcome. I can feel the excitement everywhere, not only in the company, in the house, but also in the whole city. So it's been really inspiring and, and I feel honored to be here. <laughs>